So yeah, here we go. It's my Mitsubishi Delica, filmed this time in high resolution on my new um, camera phone that didn't seem to work very well for doing a live broadcast. Um, so just to quickly get to the point, the Mitsubishi Delica L400, um, it's basically the L400 van, but um, turned into a minibus and then given Mitsubishi Pajero stroke Shogun running gear. So it is four wheel drive, hence the chunky tires and the bull bar arrangement and the ground clearance. Um, it has quite a bit of that. Uh, they look really wobbly and as if they're gonna fall over. I don't think they're quite as bad in that respect as the L300, which came before. And uh, this is uh, one I bought this very afternoon from my friend Jasper. And uh, I've known Jasper and this truck since 2010 when he rescued me from a snowdrift with this car that I was stuck in, in my Citroen BX. It only has one sliding door at the back. There isn't one on this side, as you can see. This is actually the short wheelbase version. You can get a longer one, um, but you'll see just down here, it says Space Gear Delica and uh, more of that on the back. Space Gear Delica. I've already emblazoned this with a hub nut sticker uh, it's got a Bajatronics sticker on it as well. It has a really large opening tailgate. Excuse me, it's local boy racers in their golfs drive past. And uh, very spacious. It's got rear seats that fold up to the side and then fold down thusly. If I can do this one-handed, this isn't necessarily a job for the single-handed, um, but I will give it a go live on camera. We'll do this one. We'll put that down. We'll pull this up. We'll unhook the thing from the thing and there we go pull this lever up comes the back to a certain extent and there we go we now have a full seven seater yes i do, do mean a seven seater this bench when you fold it down does make uh, an entire um, seven seater vehicle uh, we've also got the option to spin the seat so i'm just going to fold that one up a bit um, for a bit more space and then I think it's this lever down here is it there's so many levers on these seats um, no, I don't think it's that one I think that's the one that folds the back up uh, we should jump through because we can there's limited headroom onto this seat we're going to pull the side door open and hop out this way uh, you can see why this is an ideal kids vehicle and if I pull that one and uh, can I then spin the seat? Oh yes, there we go. And you can spin the seats round, so they're sideways, so you can sit on the seat and admire wonderful views, of which there are many in Wales, um, or you can have them go the other way, so you can have a conference in the back. Um, I'm not gonna go for the conference, is that locked? No, it hasn't. I'm gonna go just that way, but yeah. Pull another lever, base folds up, and you can slide the seat back and forth very easily as well. He says it's just not easy to do one-handed to be honest but there's lots of options there We've got controls for the air conditioning in the back they're all tested and functional but yeah i bought it not necessarily because i need a family vehicle although increasingly i do um, because i now have a family in my life um, but also because i need a decent tow vehicle now the eagle eyed amongst you may have noticed but it doesn't have a tow hook on the back. I apologize for the noise my sandals makes. Um, and yes, that is a problem. Um, I do wish it had a tow bar. Uh, we are going to fit one. I just need to acquire one. Jasper did have one fitted, but he's got another Delica and it's now on that. Uh, so that's a bit of a shame. Uh, we'll try and have a look under the bonnet, shall we? Might be a sensible thing to do. Um, but first of all, I'll take you for a look at the controls, I guess. So here we are behind the wheel of the Delica. It has a column gear lever, um, which um, works down that way. It's got an overdrive switch, which basically locks out top gear. Uh, it's got digital climate controls. It's got some sporty off-road stuff. So you can see how much you're leaning at. Nice big voltmeter, a thermometer even. I've no idea if that works at all. And uh, Jasper's fitted this double DIN unit as well airbags very adjustable front seats as well i don't believe they rotate um, nice light up here we got um, map reading lights and everything up here all mod cons 
and uh, sun visors and everything. Uh, wipers left and indicators right because this is an import. Came into the UK in 2006. And uh, there's the Super Select four wheel drive system diagram. Uh, if I just put the ignition on and, and you, you'll see that um, it's currently flashing um, orange lights um, everywhere. Uh, that's because the limit switch on the center diff isn't working. Uh, so it's saying, whoa, you might be in four wheel drive. But I know I'm not because this is the gear selector down here. So you've got all these positions. Too high is your standard running on the road. Four high um, doesn't actually engage four wheel drive. Uh, what that does, if we move it just one position, yeah, that's two, so that's one. Uh, that's now in four high. What that does is if the center diff, which is a viscous unit, detects slip, it engages, but apparently separate sensors then tell the front drive shafts to connect in. Um, so it isn't just done on the viscous system. And then um, if you want to lock that center diff for some proper off-roading, you go to the next position. And uh, although, I wonder if I've just accidentally gone too far there. Let's go one. Yeah, that feels like I've locked the center diff there. Um, it, it's um, hard to be sure. This is um, true hub nut. Yeah, so it's something like that. It doesn't actually feel like it's got as many positions or as are indicated. Um, very strange. There we go. Wonderful joys of technology. Uh, I'm going to stop doing any more of that. Obviously, we've only got two pedals down here. Uh, we should go and have a peek at the bonnet. I should turn the ignition off. Remove the key so it stops going bongity 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 bong. That's quite irritating. And I'm now rushing because I'm trying to get this done before the sun disappears. It is um, the sun is setting on a beautiful day. Ah, there it is. And there we go. We don't see an awful lot under here because the engine is mostly buried under the windscreen, really. Um, but that is the 2.8 litre turbo diesel engine. I forget how much power it puts out, but I'm guessing probably somewhere around 120 brake horsepower and uh, a fair amount of torque. So like I say, the cylinder head has been replaced and uh, a few other jobs over time. The battery is apparently new in 2016, but still seems to be good. Uh, the fuel filter there, that's gonna be fun to get at, isn't it? Not looking forward to that job, um, but given this finger service is on the cards because uh, it's well overdue one. Um, all the lights seem to work at the front. Um, I'm not so sure about the back. There is a slightly rusty fog light going on let's try the lights why ever not um, fog lights and we'll put the rear fog light on as well and we can see if it works uh, so if you come around the front the front end is now ablaze uh, obviously I don't drive around with my fog lights on because I'm not a complete idiot but it's nice to know they work and we're gonna see what's going on at the back end uh, slightly rusty exhaust oh well, the fog light is working but I have to say the angle could be better so we might try and adjust that uh, to improve it but yeah rear lights are working there haven't done an indicator check yet so we'll turn off the rear fog light front fog light all of those we'll press that i like the way the um entire dashboard almost fell in there that's quite nice not ever so well attached we'll leave that be shall we there we go it's uh, not a bad old bus. It's um, had a fairly hard life. Um, it's been used to um, haul timber around. Uh, Jasper was um, has been in various bands, so it's lugged uh, gear all over Europe. So um, it's had a pretty hard life, really, but it still seems to work, still seems to go nice, doesn't make any hideous noises, and uh, should hopefully be just what I need. We'll get a tow bar on it, and then it can transport members of my fleet, most notably the uh, 2CV, which is probably the illest of the fleet at the moment in terms of trying to get it on the road. And I've just kind of given up. I think it needs to go visit Jono at peak 2CV. Uh, this, incidentally, um, is... I thought it had the sticker on it somewhere. There we go. Made in India, MG Rover. So you know that's going to be good. That is a rear strut top for the City Rover. I'm awaiting two front ones as well. Um, so uh, hopefully there'll be City Rover 
news soon. You know, I, I like to have a bit of a varied fleet, don't I? Um, so um, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to spin the interior seats around without doing this, because I can do that now, we're not live. So I'm going to quick do of that and we'll look at a different layout. So there we go, now we've got the seats facing the other way. So you can have a more sociable drive. Not that we're allowed sociable drives at the moment, except with our households. But um, yeah, it's a different way of doing things. Arguably a bit safer in a crash situation as well, as long as you've got the headrest set, which I haven't, because I'm just demonstrating to you the flexibility of this interior. And that's the other thing you can do to make a bit more space in the back. But I think that's probably enough walking around really, but yeah, lots of these came to the UK, um, an awful lot of them. You think New Zealand got loads of different um, grey imports. Not so much the case uh, here in the UK. We got specific ones and these were the absolute rage for a time. Still fetch fairly decent money. And I suspect it's because it's never really been replaced. Yes, that is a little bit of oil that's dropping, don't worry about that. So yeah, an awful lot of them came over here, an awful lot of them in this green colour. And uh, they proved very popular indeed. And there's still quite a good following for them as well, which is really, really nice. Uh, it's pleasing to see. But I think we should probably go for a drive. I'm not sure. I haven't got my um, little action camera with me. I'm just shooting on the um, normal um, mobile phone, the new one that keeps on breaking when I try streaming with it. But we'll go and see how we get along. Right, we'll see how this goes. Like I said, the action camera will give you a much wider view. Um, I don't think I can actually um, zoom out any more on this. Oh, oh maybe I can. There we go. Uh, I can go into a wider screen mode. And uh, we'll see how that does. Uh, I'm going to adjust the camera a bit so it's not resting quite on the window. Um, but I shall insert the key. We shall wait for glow plug light straight off because it's already warm. And there we go, that is a proper agricultural noise. Um, as I say, we've got a flashing light because the um, centre diff can't detect when it's in or out, but it, it is out, I know it's out. Um, but if I move it forward, yep, there we go. Now we've got the four wheel drive engaged. And uh, now we'll go back to just two wheel drive, that's all we need. We pull the column to lever towards, and then I think we're just drowning it to D. The bulb has gone in the D position, but uh, power steering pump making some exciting noises. It's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a very bouncy, rather firm ride, as you might expect for a 4x4 that is on a Range Rover. But uh, it certainly feels capable enough for me. very lazy automatic transmission I think it works quite well actually uh, we'll go for a spin around the town of Newquay because it's very pretty and once lockdown's over you must come and visit um, Newquay it's a very lovely little town few people getting their um, exercise but it's really strange you sit so high up but the floor is high so the driving position doesn't feel like a truck because the floor is simply too high for that. And as we come down into Nuki proper, uh, yeah, it's just absolutely breathtakingly beautiful down here and so, so empty. This is a, so sad to see. I can't wait for the um, lockdown restrictions to allow people to come back. I mean, we've been enjoying the fact that we can just um, enjoy wandering around an empty village but at the same time you're feeling very sad about the fact that all the businesses are out but yeah it's very smooth very leisurely we'll climb a hill in a moment there's another import it's a Mazda Bongo and uh, yeah we'll, we'll um, see how lazy it is it's not a high revving power plant this but it will pull you up the side of a mountain The overdrive out while we're in town. Oh, the chippy is open. Well, that's worth knowing. Actually, 
it feels perkier than I remember. But now everyone knows I'm coming. Uh, yeah, not the most peaceful of vehicles by any stretch. And uh, we should go this way, I think. It's uh, the very definition of slush box, I think. It's a very slushy automatic. Let's check this way. Uh, w one thing I will say, the wind deflectors do block your view quite substantially, but uh, they are useful things to have. Socially distanced chatting going on there. Go and find a quicker road for a bit more of a blat. Hey, I'm taking it in for tyres tomorrow. I knew the tyres were bad. Uh, Jasper wasn't going to hide that one from me. Um, so, uh, but safe in the knowledge, I would be spending more money on it. But then I haven't really been had to spend much on the fleet lately, so it's nice to have something to do and something to spend on. your window up things do get a fair bit quieter to be honest might even put some lights on because we're driving in and out of shadow at the moment but yeah very good mirrors and uh, decent manners they're not the most amazing vehicle to drive in terms of dynamics I can feel this one pulling to one side it does need an alignment check which I'll be getting done tomorrow as well ready and go that's 50 and we're going downhill yeah we just about got to 60 there did start slowing down so we got roadworks going on but uh, yeah it's no ball of fire I haven't bought this because I want a fine handling sports car. Uh, this has very much been bought to do a job, much as my Honda SMX did some years ago. In terms of fuel economy, I'm expecting low 20s. Give the brakes a shove. I think it had a few calipers replaced uh, for a fairly recent MOT. And we just come to a stop. Yeah, definitely um, agricultural, old school. Uh, kind of takes you back to what these 4x4s were like. I've no idea what gear it's in. It feels like it's done about 600 gear changes there. That is my Mitsubishi Delica. I look forward to having some um, adventures together and helping out other members of the fleet it really is quite big but thank you very much for watching sorry the first reveal went so catastrophically wrong i look forward to seeing you in a future high resolution video farewell Looking shoes. oh i think you'll like this by the way look at this cv645 make your vehicle fascinating and gives you ultimate gratification. Oh yes, I feel most gratified.